With any expansion release, it is a time of great excitement and a time of great concern. Expansions usually try to recreate the game in some new way. They do this by bringing new in-game systems, new loot, new character customization, new areas, fishing. I'll explain that one in a minute. Guild Wars 2 is about to climb that mountain, that expansion release mountain. End of Dragons is slated to release in early 2022, and all of Tyria's defenders are ready to summit that mountain with ArenaNet and Guild Wars 2. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay now, at the time of creation of this video, we have already seen quite a few things that ArenaNet has in store for us. We've seen a handful of new elite specializations, we've seen fishing, we've seen skiffs, we have seen- OH MY GOD IS THAT A DAMN TURTLE! <laughs> Personally, I'm excited to get this adventure started, and by the end of this video, I'm gonna convince you to be excited too. I am gonna show you why Guild Wars 2 has the chance to top the MMORPG market in 2022. We'll get there. First and foremost, the least well-received thing I've seen thus far for End of Dragons is fishing. At least, from what I can tell. Now, to be fair, there are some people who think that this is going to be a welcome addition, we'll say, to the game. And I can agree with that. Other people weren't as enthusiastic about casting a line out into the water and waiting. But I think it could be the best. Part of what makes Guild Wars 2 fun is the immersion factor. Being able to play the game and just be completely enthralled and in the story. Your outside life just melts away as you are farming, you're fighting, you're doing all these things. And part of that immersion is also having real life things that you do, or that you can do in real life, in the game. It's right there. Fishing is a staple in a lot of MMORPGs. Some games have a bit of a simplistic view on it, while other games might have a bit more advanced content around it. But I want you to think of it like this. Why would Guild Wars 2, or more specifically ArenaNet, announce this as one of its crowning features of the End of Dragons release? I believe it's a telltale sign that this is just the surface. Fishing is just the surface of what this expansion will actually have for it in store in store and have it, you get the point. There's a number of ways that fishing could be spun into the story, it could be spun into your character's progression. Obviously, the easiest thing to say that it's gonna be tied to is cooking. I mean, fishing and cooking, that that makes sense. Quiet! None of you work as a team! Where's the lamb sauce? Come on, man. But there could be a number of different applications that we aren't seeing. One of my favorite ways that fishing was integrated into some other form or mechanic within a game, a system within the game, was in World of Warcraft. During the Burning Crusade, you had to fish to summon one of the bosses that you could fight. That was a really cool thing, and you needed someone who was skilled enough to fish the damn thing out of the water. Maybe Guild Wars 2 will follow suit, something like that, maybe something a little different. Also, they're dumping a shitload of fish all over Tyria. Another big announcement was that they announced skiffs, a boat of sort. And I'll be honest with you, this is probably the only way in my life that I will ever own a boat. And of course, this ties beautifully with the fishing feature. I mean, a boat and fishing. It makes sense. You're on the Jade Sea. It makes sense. So grab your friends, go out fishing for them. You might pull up some flounder, maybe some salmon, a crate or two. Self-dignity. Having a boat to be able to deploy and then go out fishing in Tyria is something that I'm extremely excited for. That just adds another layer to this immersion factor that I'm talking about. Think of it like this. The past two expansions, both uh, Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire, they had some type of major mobility thing that made your character move around, but wasn't necessarily integral to the storyline. Somewhat. Heart of Thorns saw gliding. Path of Fire saw mounts. And now, you're on a boat. This is another feature I feel like left a lot of people just saying, meh, but I disagree with that meh. Being able to explore all the waterways in and around Tyria, Cantha, and what have you, 
is something that's really, really interesting. It, it has my attention. And again, I bring this up. They wouldn't have implemented this into the game if there wasn't some major arcing story that's going to be behind it. That there is going to be more than just, oh, you have a boat. Oh, rich guy with a yacht. Okay, quick sidebar. To earn your like and subscription, I'm going to tell you one solid dad joke. My wife told me to start doing lunges to stay healthy. I looked at her and said, Well, honey, that is one giant step forward. I'll be honest with you guys, the more you watch, the, the, the worse they get. They don't get any better. Okay, so I hinted at it in the beginning of the video, and I will follow up now. We're getting a goddamn turtle. This tank of a mount is the Siege Turtle. It's a turtle with cannons on its back. It's essentially blast toys that you can... You, you can mount, um, you can run, you get it, you can drive a turtle. <clears throat> now, if you watch some of the, uh, ArenaNet live stream where the, it seemed like they just showed a pre-recorded video, which is fine, because they hinted at why this mount is going to be good for new players and old players alike. This is going to help new players be integrated into zones and with older players, because older players are going to have the mount, it's a two-person mount, they can drive around grab up the new player who has no idea what the hell is going on. I'm looking for someone to share in an adventure. An adventure? The <laughs> and then take them on this exploration. This is, this is exactly what the Guild Wars 2 community does the best, which is help each other out. Obviously the mount being a two-seater, uh, one driver and one, one cannoneer. A blasty boy it, you get the gist but once I saw this I freaked out a little <laughs> I will admit I imagined myself playing my Guild Wars 1 character which was a warrior monk named Rook Searing Blade and he was the guild master of the Jade Sea Guardians which was my guild during factions we played as Luxons and Luxons had siege turtles it's so cool and for players who have played Guild Wars 1 and played factions I'm sure that that resonates with them. I'm sure that they got just as much excitement out of it as I did. And the best part is, this mount doesn't go away for combat. At least that's what they're saying. Is that it is essentially a walking tank of a turtle. <laughs> that's so cool. Just imagine Tequadle coming out on his normally scheduled spawn to see 30 siege turtles all lined up with armor-piercing rounds. <laughs> i tune in for that violence. Lastly, of course, what draws in a number of people for the new expansion is the new Elite Specializations, and obviously it's got my attention too. At the time of recording this video, we only know three. Right now, the Virtuoso, said that wrong, Virtuoso, Virtuoso, there we go, Harbinger, and then Willbender. We will obviously know more moving forward, but as a Firebrand main, ah, uh, that Willbender looks pretty darn cool. Seeing the Willbender flip around and kick and heaven's palm, everything, it's 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 pretty interesting. <laughs> Jumping all around while my firebrand and, you know, just moves all nice and slow and methodical. <laughs> also, the dual swords, that's pretty darn cool. I, I might have to take a look. I might. I, I'm not making any promises. I'll let you know. The new Elite Specializations are always a way to entice players to the game. Players that may have grown stale with the current Elite Specializations or didn't want to level up a new character. The end of Dragon's expansion is set to come out early next year in 2022. And honestly, I believe it will rocket Guild Wars 2 to the top of the MMORPG market. And if I do go Willbender, I am excited to become a swashbuckling pirate on my skiff going up and down the coast, raiding things, you know. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. And then kicking back and relaxing on my skiff out on open water. Maybe drop a line in and see what fish I can get. What do you think? What about End of Dragons appeals to you the most? Tell me in the comment section down below. As always, I am the Caffeinated Dad, and I will see you guys around.